Okay, we have a Tram D201 came in for repair. Um, this is the second version of the 23 channel, so this one has the circuit boards and was made in Mexico. Um, it came in for, the complaint was, a pop and smoke. So, there was a pop, definitely, and it wasn't actually smoke, it was steam. It was the uh, capacitor, the cathode capacitor on the 6L6, which is the audio... Uh, tube in these um, that capacitor had vented to the atmosphere basically um, didn't completely blow out the end they had a little you know hole built into them that uh, if they overpressurize they vent so it was actually the the oil inside basically turns to steam so what had caused that was actually before I get too far here you'll see there's a test lead wire coming out I just want to show that it is working now so it's going into the dummy load over here. This test lead wire is connected to, i pull the schematic here real quick. Okay, so here's your BA board. This is right here is the capacitor that it vented, okay? And it had blown this 10th ten amp, that's one-tenth of an amp, not an amp, fuse, which is F600, which is also mounted to the BA board, okay? And if you follow, this just goes down, if you follow down right on the other side here, you can see that goes to ground, okay? So, this side of the circuit goes to ground, so you've got your two resistors, two 220 ohm resistors, the fuse, and part of the problem, the reason this capacitor vents is, it was kind of a design flaw, I guess you could say. If this fuse blows, this capacitor is still connected, if you follow, to the cathode of V603, which is your audio power tube. So, even if there is a problem with your audio tube and circuit, and this fuse blows, and it gets over voltage because this is only a 150 volt capacitor. Well, if more than 150 volts hits it, it stands a chance of blowing. So this capacitor is not protected by this fuse. So when I, when I reinstalled, I put a 450 volt fuse here. So in any case, um, like I say, this had blown. So right now I have the voltmeter, which is this test lead right here, is attached to the BA board at this point right here at the junction junction of the fuse and this capacitor that's where I'm measuring the voltage so that's what is right there so after you do the repair or if you ever have one of those fuses that blows um, if you have some test equipment and you feel now you have to remember um, come on camera what are you doing here there you go um, you have to remember there's extremely high voltage in these things that 26 volts right there is very low. On that same board, you have hundreds, you know, hundreds of volts in that area. There's lots, lots of really high voltage circuits. So if you don't know what you're doing, I don't recommend working on them. Um, if you do have a little bit of experience working on tube equipment, if you ever see that fuse blown, you replace it before you turn turn this back on. I suggest you hook up a voltmeter to that point I just showed on the schematic. When you turn the radio on, monitor your voltmeter right there, and it should stay somewhere like right now because you're it has gone through an 82 ohm uh, resistor already, the one that's down on the main board right off of the cathode of the audio tube. So normally you'll see around 31 volts at the tube, but after that resistor, it's not unconstitutional like you see there around say 26 volts. So, but turn turn the radio on. You want to pay very close attention to that voltage okay and see if it gets if it gets too high if you see it start to get up above say 35 volts or more you've probably got your problem is still there and that fuse is going to blow again so like I say here it is hooked up to actually I can there it is on air So, it's 
back on the dummy load. So if you watch the voltage, and you'll see that voltage fluctuate as I talk into the microphone. I'm going to key the mic here. Audio. 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 Radio. One, two. Okay, so you can see it's doing... Right around eight, swinging around 18 to 19 watts on AM. Now, when that fuse blows, or if the, you're having a problem at, in that circuit, you're going to lose your volume, and you will have no, you'll have still have a carrier power when you key the microphone in AM, but you will have absolutely no modulation or very low modulation if you have a problem in that circuit. You will still have good transmit and power on sideband though. There's very little in these radios, as far as the your transmit audio is concerned, there's very little circuitry that's shared between AM and sideband. So, if we pull the schematic up again. You can see here's your microphone, and here... Is your balanced modulator okay this line is your audio line going into the balanced modulator and that's where it comes out and goes into the driver tube because you have to remember it's a suppressed carrier so your audio in sideband goes through the microphone through uh, v601 goes through a half of v601 which is a 6gh8a comes out of that and goes into the V600 goes through another half section of the 6GH8A, comes out, and you'll see follows along, goes into the balanced modulator. That's the end of the audio amplification as far as the mic circuit's concerned in sideband. Now in AM, it would continue across, go to the audio driver, and then to the 6L6, your main audio tube. So if you have a problem with this tube, you'll still have sideband audio transmit, which is the problem, which is exactly what this had. So now that we can see this is working, let's uh, turn it off here. Pop the cover. So here is your audio power tube. And you can see this one's already been redone. Had it previously had all the resistors changed and all the electrolytic capacitors. The capacitor that... Uh, get a light here. This capacitor right here is the one that will vent or, or blow out. Okay, it blows out the bottom. Now the fuse would normally be right here. I usually switch them over to the back because it's good practice to always upright these resistors so these are normally they'd be two watts these are three watts so you start to run out of room on this little board here so the fuse was relocated to the back of the circuit board so it's kind of tight down there but you see that's where this test lead that runs out the front runs down to it's clipped on the bottom side of that fuse which is the junction between the fuse F600 and the electrolytic capacitor rate right on the other side comes out of that goes through a resistor down on the board and then straight to pin 8 or the cathode of your audio power tube so like I say if you ever have problems with your volume operating volume that's coming out of the speaker if that's either gone or very low and you have lost Mod, uh, modulation on AM, you, you'll still your carrier will still be fine because that tube has nothing to do with your RF power. That's all about the audio. So if you've lost that on AM, but sideband is still fine, and especially if that fuse has blown, um, that's the thing to check. Like I say, in, in this case, the problem was the tube was shorted, so it's a bad vacuum tube that caused the problem. So replacing. Replacing the tube with a new one, actually a new old stock. I always prefer to use the vintage tubes, especially the audio tubes. They were a lot better, better sound quality. But uh, if this if this tube has internal problems, especially on pin 8, where it's, some, something happens that causes excessive voltage on pin 8, the cathode, 
that's the problem you're going to see. Fuse blows, capacitor explodes, modulation disappears, and your uh, audio, your, your receive audio disappears. So if we look here in the RCA tube, receiving tube manual, you can see pin 8 is the cathode. So that's the one where your problem what causes the problem excessive voltage here so like I say just a quick tip mainly not to show the radio in operation this was just mainly to show if you ever have a, have that problem that's uh, what to look for and what like I say the safe startup procedure install test lead just in case there's you know a problem somewhere else in the audio circuit that's causing that you want to monitor that voltage because the last thing you want to do is burn up especially if you just installed a brand new you know six l six it's not like they you know they're a dollar or two a piece they're you know they a little pricey especially for good vintage tubes so i always recommend hooking up a voltmeter to monitor your cathode voltage with a voltmeter so if there's a problem now when you first first turn the radio on Matter of fact, if we close the lid here, we're basically starting from a you know new condition. So okay, power is still on the variac. Turn the power on here and watch that voltage. There won't be anything at the start, and you'll see it gradually start to go up. That's because there's no there's no voltage will appear, I should say, on the cathode until the tube starts to conduct and you'll start to start to see the voltage appear so as you, you hear the audio will start to come out of the speaker as you start to hear it increase you'll notice the voltage will start to rise at that voltmeter because the cathode voltage is going up but like I say when you first first turn it on try to make sure it doesn't get up above 30 volts especially if you're testing at that point where I showed which is after the first resistor that's in series with the cathode you know right at F600 it shouldn't get really above three <clears throat> or 30 volts. There you see there's no voltage. No voltage. I've turned the volume up here. Okay, you can see the voltage is starting to come up. If you listen to the speaker. So, and what I did, I flipped it, it was still on dummy load, I reached over there really quick and flipped it over to back live on air. So, as you can see, it's pretty much settled right around 26 volts at F600. Yep, right there, it's 26 volts. Yep. The decimal point, what's after the decimal point doesn't matter so much. But uh, like I say, you just don't want to, if you see it start to increase too much, turn radio back off. The last thing you want to do is cherry a brand new 6L6 tube. And if you have, you know, you can always monitor your line current, how much the radio is using. These normally pretty much any, and that's not just the, you know, this version of the Tram D201. The earlier hand-wired version, um, this which is the later 23 channel made in Mexico that has circuit boards inside and the later 40 channels they all run at approximately the the same current because it's basically this the same radio just main changes or how many how many channels and how how the board was set up either hand wired or done the circuit boards but as you can see it's in the amp amp meters in zero to two amps and there's a one right underneath of the, the line there it's dead and that's usually where trams run at right at about one amp and you can see actually if I flip over here back over to dummy load and talking now this is an AM so there's radio keyed audio 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 still less than one and a quarter amps and we'll switch over to sideband see you're rated around one and a quarter amps so that's the the normal current draw on a properly working tram d201 so like i say if you happen to have a current radio where you can monitor your the line current going into this radio that's the average operating range